Hey, what's up? This is Dimitri from UH Studio Design Academy, and I'm so excited to finally have a YouTube course on Blender for architectural design. So this is going to be a free course because I want to give as many people the chance to learn Blender as possible. By the end of this course list, you should feel comfortable knowing where all the tools that are important for architectural design are located within Blender's user interface and pretty much know how to get started in designing some of your creative inventions. And I'm super excited to finally offer this to you. So let's get started. When you first open Blender, it probably looks something like this. We have a cube, a light, and a camera. We can click in different places to select elements. So here we have the 3D viewport, we have the timeline on the bottom, we have the outliner on the side, and then we have the properties on the bottom. On the top we have windows where we can set up different elements. So the most important element and what we're going to be talking the most about today is the 3D viewport. So that's the biggest window and that's where we can manipulate and pan around. We rotate around with the middle mouse button and we shift and hold the middle mouse button to pan around. We can click and hold to select multiple elements and if we click and hold somewhere else we can deselect elements. If you want to move something we can click on it and click the move icon over here and then we can start moving that element around. This element is called the gizmo and if we can click and hold one of the axes then we move it along that axis and if you see in the top where we have a header typically for the viewport once we are in an active command it tells us some information like how many units we're moving along which direction. Also notice on the bottom here we have hotkeys. Once I activate a command like move we have different kinds of hotkeys that are available. So take a look at those and see what we can do. So for example right now if I press the X hotkey button you see we lock the moving on along the X axis. If we press Z while I'm, st I'm still in the same command we lock in the Z axis. Now let's type 2. So we moved our camera two units up along the Z axis. The colors are universal for X, Y, and Z. They should be aligned with different apps that you may be familiar as well. And we have a gizmo in here that also shows us those same different colors. The same way that we move, we can also rotate elements. So if we click and hold, we can rotate either along one of the global axes or the white circle is rotating around the current view. So that's not aligned to anything in particular. When we select an object, we also see it being highlighted in the outliner. The outliner contains all the information available for 3D assets. So anything that we select, or if we click and hold and select multiple, we can see everything being highlight highlighted in the outliner. Your outliner probably looks a little bit different. You probably have just the eye view, which is hiding and showing. We can also select multiple within the outliner in the same way by clicking and holding or by shift clicking everything else. So also when we click an object we see that our context within the properties changes. The first sets of icons, so the gray ones and the red one, the world, up to this gap are universal. So they're setups for the scene. The, the next set of icons are all related to the currently selected object. So observe now the green icon where we have the cube selected. That's the object data properties and that contains information specific to this type of icon which signifies a mesh. If you click on the camera, you see that the icon changes and we have some different information pertaining to our camera. If we click on the lamp, again the green icon changes, we have a lamp and we have information pertaining to lamps. Those icons are also the same as the ones that you see in the outliner, so it makes it fairly easy to identify what kind of object we're dealing with. Within the viewport, we have some information. So in here, it lists the current collection that we are on. In Blender, layers are called collections. And then the object. If I change that object name, let's call it Cam1. And you see within the 3D viewport, that also changes. It also gives us the current view. So we're in user perspective. But let's say we want to go to a top view. So there are a couple of different ways to go to the top view. 
the easiest is probably clicking on the Z in this little 3D gizmo on the top left hand corner, excuse me, right hand corner. So if we click on that, we see now it's a stop orthographic view and we can click and cycle around these to click on different views. And that's also available in the view menu. So we can go to view, viewpoint, and we have a series of options, camera, top, bottom, front, back, right, and left. So now let's say that we want to change some settings. So if we go to the cube and let's scale it. So we're going to click the scale button and we can either scale it universally or we can press and scale it in just one direction. So and right now I'm scaling it along the X axis. So while I'm holding the gizmo, let's press two. And now our cube is twice the size. One of Blender's really powerful features are its modifier stack. Essentially, it's the same as using Grasshopper nodes, but in a much easier user-friendly way to adjust. So if we go to the wrench, these are the modifier properties for the currently selected object. And let's add a modifier called array. And as you see, now we have two cubes with no distance between them. Now, if I increase the factor, let's make it from X factor X instead of one. So that's one relative unit based on the bounding box of the element. Let's make it 1.2 and let's change the count to five. So now we have five of the same objects. We can still scale the initial one and everything adjusts. We can add multiple arrays. So I'm going to minimize this modifier and I'm going to add another array. This time, instead of X, let's make X zero. Let's make Y 1.2 and let's change the count to five. And now we have a two dimensional array. If you would like to, we can also add a third array. And this time I'm going to change the X to zero and let's change the Z to 1.4. So we actually want those to be gap to have a slightly larger gaps and let's change them to seven. So now we have a stack of cubes and if we scale them, if we scale the original one, they all scale. If you would like to edit this object, there's a series of different modes within Blender depending on the kind of object. The ones that we'll be using the most are object mode, where we can select all kinds of different objects and then edit mode, which is pertainable only to meshes. So let's click over here in the viewport in the top left hand corner where it says object mode and let's go into edit mode. And now you see it only selects our original item. If we don't want to see anything else, we can go within the modifiers and turn off the display modifier and viewport icon, which looks like a screen. Now throughout Blender's interface, so the modifiers and the outliner, there are a series of different options for visibility. And there's always an option for disabling the visibility of an object in the viewport, hiding it and disabling the object at render time. In Blender, there are two separate things. So make sure that you're disabling both in case you're rendering. So now we have just the original cube. So then next to edit mode, we have a series of three icons. The first one is vertex selection. The second one is edge selection and the third one is face. If we press the first one, we can select the vertices. And if we press the second, we can select the edges. And the third selects the faces. So let's select the second one and select an edge. And now let's move it slightly over. And let's see what happens once we turn on our array objects. So they have all changed. If we move that element around, you can see it continues to change everything else. So we're currently editing the mesh and we're getting a live preview directly of the non-destructive modifier that we have set in this case, three array modifiers. So that's going to be for the first video. If you'd like to support this channel, please look at the links in the description below and stay tuned for next week for the next video in the series.